Looks like Donald Rollo. Who's that? He was this French professor I had at Yale. I was obsessed with him for two years. Obsessed. You? I know. Pretty hard to believe, isn't it? No, I think it's great. Go talk to him. What are you crazy? What if it isn't him? We'll find out. I can't. What if it is him? I don't get it. Well, he hardly knew me. You said he was your professor. Yeah, but it was this huge lecture class. I mean, it was just a dot. So what do you have to lose? Go talk to him. I'm going to go to the magazines, and when I get back, you're going to tell me all about it. Good. Bye-bye. Jamie Lewis, French intensive, Yale class of 90, B plus, right? Right. Huh? Who are you talking to? What? Ooh, here he comes. God. What are you doing? I don't want him to see me. I thought he didn't even know you. Well, he might recognize me. I mean, he caught me staring at him a couple times back at Yale. Besides, I look awful. I have never seen you like this. I know. But what's he doing here? Mm -hmm. well, what is he doing in Los Angeles? In my bookstore? Destiny. It's destiny. Oh, you think so? Yeah, things like that were always happening to me when I was young and afraid to take risks. Looking back, I wish I'd have taken more risks. I wouldn't feel so frustrated now. So what should I do? I'll tell you what you shouldn't do. Don't ignore your feelings. Tell the guy how you feel about him. But I hardly know him. So? So? What if he's married? What difference does that make? You're not telling him because you want to go to bed with him. You want to communicate with him, make him real. But he'd see it in my eyes, you know? The lust, the fantasies. He'd sense that. He'd know. Hey, what is it with this guy, anyhow? No, it's an, just an instinct, you know? Like, I, I can't identify it with a word. I mean, he has this voice, this incredibly sexy voice. Explain that a little bit. I mean, if I could take his voice to bed, <laughs> I would. Oh, you've got to go over there. Get information, get his address, get in your car and go over and knock on his door. What are you worried about? It's not brain surgery. Uh, uh, no, it's harder. I mean, what would I say to him? But I've been in love with you for the past four years, and, I've, and I want to make mad, passionate love with you. <laughs> you can say that if you want to. In any case, talk to him. You have a lot in common. What? What do you mean, what? French? Yale? Ivy League? Ivy. Talk about the goddamn Ivy. Just, it's not worth the risk. I'd just end up making a fool of myself. You want to wind up like me one day, looking back at all the things you never did, all the challenges you never took, just because you were afraid of making a fool of yourself? Be a fool. Be a glorious fool and have a glorious time. 
Hi, honey. How are the term papers? Terminal. Well, these kids can't write. I don't think they can even read. My life is one big bore. I think that you should get off the pity pot. You're probably still in mourning for not getting tenure. Well, not getting tenure is bad enough. But to be stuck at some rinky-dink state college where the students I couldn't don't buy care it. less what I'm saying. It's not fair of you to take out your frustrations and your disappointments on your students. There's got to be some student out here. There who is. Inspire. That's what I'm okay. saying. If there was just one kid who could make me think of things I haven't thought of before, teach me something about myself that I don't already know. Well, I betcha that it'll happen soon. I suppose one can always hope. Oh, God, you're not expecting the Goldstein kid for another piano lesson, are you? No. I don't know who it could be. Well, shall we pretend we're not here? Well, they've probably already I'm seen probably us sitting here in the balcony. Get it. Hi. May I help you? Yeah, um, does Donald Bravo live here? And who are you? <clears throat> I'm, I'm Jerry Lewis. I was a student of his at Yale about four years ago. Really? That's amazing. We were just talking about his days at Yale. Really? <laughs> well, he's here. Um, would you like to come upstairs? Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to believe this. No, 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 no. I'm his wife. Donald, this is um, one of your students from Yale. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, Jamie. Jamie Lewis. Jamie Lewis? French intensive, remember? I'm sorry, I don't remember. I have so many students. Oh, I understand. Well, how long ago was it? It was about four years ago. Actually, 1989. That was the year you won Teacher of the Year Award. <laughs> that was a very good year for me. It was a great year for me, too. You were the best teacher I ever had. You really inspired me. So, I mean, when I saw you the other day at the bookstore, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I, mean, I thought, is that Professor Rollo? And then I thought, what are you doing here? So what are you doing here? Why aren't you back at Yale? Well, I've... We've been in L.A. now We've for about Los six Angeles, months. You know, and, uh, you know, why don't we all go in and sit down? Oh, pussies. Oh, I love pussies. <sighs> oh, this is just the most, isn't this just the most ironic thing in the world? I mean, you know, here you have this one professor who really pushes your buttons. You know, I mean, creative buttons. And, you know, you graduate and then you're thrust out into this totally dull, uninspiring world. And, and then you see him again and you just get inspired all over again. It's, you know, I mean, for what? I don't know. But you just get this rush. Well, I, I can't believe you don't remember this girl, Donald. I mean, how could you forget a student like this? Uh, I'm curious. What did I end up giving you for a grade? Um, B plus. Mm, and Donald's a tough grader. I uh, sure is. But I like that. So, Kate. Um, can I call you Kate? You may. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, do you teach French also? No, I'm a piano teacher. Really? Private? Well, I teach private, and I also teach music theory at UCLA. Oh, wow, so you're both professors. So is, is that how you guys met? Well, actually, Donald was a guest professor at Columbia when I was getting my master's degree. Cool. And, um, um, co coffee. I, you know, I have coffee made. Would you like some coffee? Coffee, darling, would, great. would you like some Please, coffee? Please, that'd be great. Why don't I get us some? Uh, this isn't easy for me, so uh, don't freak out, okay? <laughs> uh, I've been in love with you for the past four years. <laughs> oh, God, I can't believe I'm telling you this. <sighs> you know, I've, I've tried to block you out, but it's like God doesn't want me to block you out. It's like he's put you in my path. 
I mean, you, you, you could have been in poetry while I was by the bestsellers, but no, we were in poetry at the same time. Milk and cream. See, I remember this poem in Le Fleur de Mal, you know, the one about eternal obsessions which climax in the most unexpected ways. Sugar! Sweet and low. He said, a thrust of conscience kills the dream, but a thrust of fantasy seals the conscience with a kiss. Do you remember when you recited that in class? I swear, I nearly slid off the chair. So, are you two getting all caught up? Uh, uh, Jamie was just reciting a poem to me. Oh. Baudelaire. Ah, Baudelaire. Donald's fascination, preoccupation. He's just completed a paper for publication on Baudelaire's disenchantment with reality. Uh -huh. It's about how true reality only exists in your dreams. Baudelaire. I remember when you proposed to me, darling, you recited that poem about fantasy, sealing the conscience with a with kiss. A kiss. Yes. And then he kissed me. It was so romantic. What time is it? Gosh, I forgot. You know, I have a class to teach, Donald. I have to go. Oh, well, uh, wait a second. Uh, uh, what? I have to go. Well, how long are you going to be gone? I come back late, always. I have a tutorial after class, and I have my regular schedule. Um, I, why? uh... I need to return those videos tonight. Well, I have a car. I'll drive you. Hey, wait a second. You're going in the wrong direction. You should have turned back there. I'm kidnapping you. What? Oh, hey, wait a minute. This isn't funny anymore. I've got papers to go grade. Look, I'm just taking you to my apartment. Your apartment? What for? Oh, hey. Hey, you're nuts, you know that? You're really crazy. Maybe. But as you once said in class, insanity and passion are cellmates in the prison of love. That was Baudelaire. I'm Donald Rollo, a man with a lawn to mow and papers to grade and a wife to come home to. Doesn't that mean anything to of you? Of course it does. Well, she's very nice and beautiful. Do you really think she'd mind? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, I'm just giving you the chance to see the effect you've had on my life, on my work. Now, how many times do you get that chance? Take the risk. <sighs> how far is it? You're a very talented young woman. This is supposed to be me. And do you know who that's supposed to be? Baudelaire? No. You. Yeah, I thought you might say that. Oh, this is getting very weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look, I don't want to have an affair. I don't want to ruin your marriage, nothing like that. I just, I just want to make love with you once so that I can just get over you. Make love? Do you even know what you're saying? I mean, if we, if we make love, you'll be even more attached. No, Look, you could never live up to the fantasies I've created. And I'll inevitably be disappointed, so I won't be attached. Come. Come look at some more of my work. Are you attracted to me? Oh, you're... I certainly think this is not about attraction. Attraction is simple. This is about respecting people's boundaries. Right and wrong. Do you really believe that? Well, how the hell do you know what I believe? You don't know me. Oh, but I do know you. Now it's your turn to get to know me, Donald. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Have you been in therapy? <sighs> Jesus. 
Are you so insecure that you can only imagine a crazy person being in love with you? There's nothing wrong with a little therapy, you know. You are so tense. Let me get you a drink. I was just denied tenure. Are you serious? Yeah. I guess they didn't think I'd been published enough. Well, that's bullshit. Yeah. It's very frustrating. I guess not all my students appreciated me as much as you. Yes, but if you can affect just one, that makes a difference. That's what they say. That's the old cliche. This is Amarone. This is my favorite Italian wine. I know. I followed you to the store one day. You know, I will tell you what I don't understand. I mean, you know, here you give these passionate lectures about the agony of unrequited love and the vital need to renounce reality and acknowledge your carnal desires. You used to say that a lot, carnal. But you don't really understand what you teach. I mean, at least not firsthand. Ah, uh -huh. yes, but just because I teach something and I understand it enough to shed a little bit of light on it, does not mean I have to agree with it on an empirical level. Oh, so basically you're full of shit. <laughs> if I teach a class on Chinese water torture, that doesn't mean I have to experience it firsthand. What does that have to do with anything? Now, what the hell do I know? But I do know this. You came to my house this afternoon for the sole purpose of seducing me, and now you're trying to confuse me by twisting my lectures all around. Where are you going? Hey, I gotta go home, kid. I can't believe this. You are actually afraid. Well, you are not the person I fell in love with. Love? Well, what the hell do you know about love? What the hell do you know about me? You are a brilliant, unappreciated man who inspired me to paint every painting on my wall. And you're also a coward. Because when someone finally has the balls to challenge you, you don't even know what to... Seals the conscience with a kiss. <sighs> What's wrong? I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was doing. I guess all I wanted was a 